All right. Hello? Cool. Hi, guys. How are we all doing? Are you having a good spree so far? Yeah, all right. Cool. So thank you very much, Dina. Yes, as Dina uh, explained, I've chosen to do a kind of a scary topic today. My understanding is in America, it's tradition that British men play bad guys in movies. So I thought like, I'd be the Jeremy Irons of attribution and do, uh, do spoofing. Now, um, as Dina mentioned, I do a lot of product research. So I go out and I talk to my clients from around the world about what they want from us, what do they think we need to build, what are the challenges that they're facing. And it alarms me pretty significantly that it's very rare for me to hear the word spoofing. Quick check, who in here has a rough idea of what STK spoofing is? Why? OK. So a lot of you are going to be surprised. For those of you who do, no spoilers, please. I'm going to very briefly run you through first the sort of concepts behind it. I am going to spare you the gory technical details, but if you are interested, I'll be around afterwards for the rest of the day. If you really like a good scare, I'm happy to provide one. So. First off, you have an app out on the store, out in the real world, and it probably looks a little bit like this. Statistically, at the end of 2017, the average app had 19, just under 19 SDKs in it. And each one of these SDKs will be sending data back and forth to an endpoint. And I have some examples up here, maybe your own backend for whatever user data maintenance you guys do your attribution provider, your social media, you know, Facebook login, share on Twitter, all of these require an SDK to talk to a server. And today I want to look at the attribution provider scenario, but please bear in mind that the concepts I'm describing today apply to all different types of SDKs, regardless of their functionality. I also please notice I have called it an attribution provider and not a just. This affects every SDK. I don't care how greasy the guy's hair was that told you that they are not spoofable. They are. <laughs> All right. So in a, in a very sort of basic way, an SDK works a little bit like this. You have actions, activities on the device, and every time one of those happens, a payload is sent from the device, from the SDK, to your endpoint. And a payload is basically it's like a letter, right? And it's got a lot of facts in it. So for an attribution provider, it will have things like the model of your phone, device IDs, perhaps your IP address. And then we can, or other attribution providers can use that to do their analysis, do their tracking, spit out their KPIs, and so on. However, it's pretty unlikely that this is what your connection is going to look like. More often than not, you're going to have something in the way. Now, there's nothing wrong with non-direct connections. I assume you're all connected to our lovingly provided free Wi-Fi. You guys are actually not directly connected every time you open Tinder to Tinder servers. You're going through the router. I am on Tinder, by the way. That's my point there. Um, <laughs> VPNs as well. If you've ever been to China and you're trying to get around regional locks and limitations on apps there, you can use a VPN so you can catch up on the latest BBC comedies or whatever. You're connecting through another server, essentially. Another scenario is what's called a proxy server, which is rather ingeniously named because it acts as a proxy for your device. In other words, in this scenario, the to the attribution provider, to the endpoint, this looks identical to the previous setup, right, where the de device is talking directly to the server. We don't actually know there's been a bump in the middle. But at the moment, this is actually not a problem. This is the problem, right? Let's say I'm a bad guy and I want to spoof your SDK. Any laptop, any MacBook can act as a proxy server. You can have your phone connect through that to the internet, right? If you've ever tried to steal Wi-Fi from Starbucks, you've probably done this. When they control, when this setup happens, they now control both the source of the data, the device, and the means of delivery. And what this allows them to do is it allows them to set up a positive feedback loop where they can just keep trying to guess what they need to send to steal uh, uh, ad spend. And the attribution provider will literally tell them, they'll mark the homework and tell them if they got it right or not. Once they've done this, once they've figured out the pattern of letters and numbers that they need to send to an attribution provider, they can throw their phone in the ocean because they don't even need it anymore. And now they can just write a script on their computer that spits out the exact amount of information, the exact style of those letters 
that attribution providers need to give them credit for their installs or even create new devices that don't really exist. Now, I want to make a side note here. Please do not think that this is so that spoofers can get fake devices into, get credit for fake devices, right? Spoofers tend to want to use real devices, right? It's very, very easy to do this. You can go online and buy 600 million device IDs for a couple hundred dollars. You could also release a free game in the store and then just harvest device IDs from that. The knock-on effect of this to an attribution provider is that spoofed data of a real device and real data from a real device look identical. And this means if you're using a fraud sol solution that ranks devices based on how they interacted prior, so from other companies' apps, even if that user has never done anything wrong and has installed 100 apps over and over again very consistently, if the spoofer grabs their IDFA, you will never know. They will have a fantastic ranking. Oh, this is a real user for sure, but it isn't. There's no way to know that. So spoofing, it completely undermines that concept. So please bear that in mind. OK. So I hope you're significantly scared. This is the part of the movie where the superhero starts to kind of freak out and realize how serious things are. I want to talk about how it affects you. Going back to our SDK map up here, I think you may have figured out the answer by now. All of these are susceptible to spoofing because, again, if the spoofer can get the source and he can get the means of delivery, what your SDK does is irrelevant. It doesn't matter. He's going to be able to create that feedback loop, and he's going to be able to solve the problem. Uh, sorry, solve the, the puzzle to put in fake data. To stick to attribution, though, let's have a look at some sort of the most common things people use for attribution. You're probably familiar with all these terms. Impressions and clicks coming from your network partners, well, you can spoof a network SDK. You actually don't need to to pull off the kind of fraud we see a lot of, but you could. It is absolutely potential. Obviously, everything that we grab and other attribution providers get from the device is all manipulatable. And that means all of the stuff that comes after the fact, anything that's based on data from a device, which in the case of mobile advertising is everything, is no longer objective. It's absolutely possible that you can contaminate it. Fraud prevention, I want to draw attention to this a little bit. One of the things that we sort of promote at Adjust is obviously a full adoption of the Adjust fraud suite. You're all using that, right? If not, we definitely need to talk. Um, but we also have the sort of the concept of common sense fraud prevention. In other words, looking at your data and saying, this looks a bit too good to be true. It probably is, right? However, to do that, that all assumes that you know what too good to be true is, right? If you have a new app out on the store and you have no spoofing protection and you're using a famous attribution provider, as soon as your bids go in for tasty KPI, uh, sorry, uh, CPIs that people want to steal, you could potentially get spoofed. And that means the data that you look at that came in hours, minutes after you launched your app could be contaminated. In other words, if this is the data that you're basing your fraud assumptions on, you are completely doomed. There's no way you're going to know what a real user looks like because they're being merged with these fraudulent installs that are being served through your SDK. So how do you know which KPIs look good? Oh no, this is really bad. So what's the solution? Well, this is the part of the movie where like, it looks like it's going to end 30 minutes before it does, because I actually have a perfect solution, and it actually works. Um, the perfect solution, ladies and gentlemen, is for Apple and Google to just tell us what is and isn't legitimate. Uh, maybe one day. We'll see. Who knows? We are working with them on some stuff. It doesn't work quite the way you would expect, but um, we're going to send our, our, our longest bearded German geniuses over to their offices every single day until we get it going. In the meantime, there are two steps. There are two approaches I want to promote for you today. The first one, and I kind of feel the most important one, is you cannot believe the hype. Now, remember, every SDK is susceptible. Because the spoofer can get the source and the delivery method, there, it is impossible to create an unspoofable or a spoof-proof SDK. This means if your SDK is closed source, it can still be spoofed. This means if you are using your own BI to send data through to an attribution provider, 
all the spoof is going to say is, oh, this, is, this code's a little bit different to my usual attribution providers. He's still going to make millions off it, so he's still going to spoof it. And even if you have an AI-driven blockchain, machine learning, crypto dynamic, logic, neutron, server-side solution sponsored by Tesla, it's not going to work. Sorry, Elon, it's not going to happen because you're still putting the whole responsibility for solving the problem on one side. It's too late. It's already been broken. So, and again, this is because they already have control of the delivery and the device. So what do we do instead? Well, the answer is, you've probably heard of this before, an SDK signature. Who here is familiar with SDK signatures? Yeah, all right. You're all about to be in about 15 seconds time. An SDK signature essentially solves the following goal, to ensure the data came from a real app running on a real device. In other words, it hasn't been fabricated. And the way that SDK signatures work is they create a secret that the beginning of the chain, the device, and the end of the chain, the server, know, but the delivery guy in the middle doesn't know, right? However, and I'm sure there's some real smart guys in here right now who are gonna say, oh, well, can't that be spoofed? The answer is actually yes. Again, you cannot stop, you cannot create a theoretically unspoofable SDK. It is impossible. That's the end of, no, it's not, it's not, we've got good news. The good news is you can price spoofers out, if I hit my button correct, there we are. The only solution is to price spoofers out. I'm sure you're all familiar with ROI, that's a really good case. If you don't know what ROI is, I don't know how you got here today. <laughs> Spoofers are also extremely interested in ROI, right? Spoofing is a financial investment, and you are trying to steal um, ad spend. If we create a signature that is hard to crack, in other words, you need like a real brain genius to solve it, that's gonna cost the spoofers money because they're gonna have to get someone who knows what they're doing. And if you are a securities expert, you're probably a little bit busy working at Google or Facebook to hack the dog dating app. The other way, <laughs> maybe you just really like dogs, I don't know. The other thing you can do, and this is what the sort of approach that Adjust is taking going forward, even if you crack the concept, even if you actually have the formula, the answer is something that is so hard to computate that you need to use computer, uh, computer power to solve it. In other words, the cost of cracking the signature goes up. You need to get an AWS instance, or you need to like put your MacBook in the freezer so it doesn't overheat, and run the numbers on there. If the cost of cracking the SDK is higher than the take that the spoofer is gonna get from stealing your, your, your ad spend, you will have no spoofing. This is how spoofing is, is beaten, right? This is the approach that banking apps take. This is the approach that securities app take. Because unless you can convince your users to sit in your office when they use your app and connect to your Wi-Fi, you cannot guarantee that the data is legitimate. So instead, you have to remove the incentive. If you don't do this, if you launch without spoofing protection, you are literally putting the key to the treasury in the spoofer's hands, because they already know how to do it. And if they own an iPhone and a MacBook, they can do it. I kind of want to do it now, actually. I convinced myself a little bit there. So that's the solution, and that's what we recommend you do. So I want to leave you today with three, approach, three steps, three things you can do right, not, not right now. Please stay until the end of the day. At the, at the party, have a few drinks and do these things. Number one, you need to run an audit on which SDKs in your app make sense to spoof. And the simple way to do this is, if this gets spoofed, do I lose money? If the answer is yes, then your, that SDK is at risk, all right? Number two, if you have your own internal data and that is worth spoofing, you need to protect it. And that means you need to develop your own cryptographic signature. Maybe that's not one for the party, right? And it doesn't just have to be financial. If you're a gaming app and you give away, you know, you can buy crystals, a user may figure out how to spoof that. You got a problem on your hands there because they're taking money out of your pockets, right? And finally, and this is the most important one, for those shortlisted SDKs, the ones that it makes financial sense to secure, you need to chase up those partners. And if you ever hear anybody say, 
oh, we're closed source, so we can't be spoofed. If you ever hear anybody say we're spoof proof, especially that one, because I, I made that up, so like, let me know if they do that. I fully recommend and advocate pulling that SDK out because it is a matter of time until someone goes, okay, what's the next app on my list? Oh, this guy doesn't have spoofing protection. And you will be robbed, your data will be contaminated, and neither you nor your attribution provider will ever know it happened. You have to be proactive. So if you, I hope you set up a lot of meetings next week, put on your grumpiest face, and make sure that you are being protected by the SDKs that are put in your app. If you are using Adjust, as I hope you all are, I would like to invite you to come and have a chat with me or Andreas. He is the head of fraud prevention at Adjust. He has one of the best beards in Germany. He's just over there. There he is. Look at that glorious mane. I can only dream of it. <laughs> we will be around. Uh, please stay for the rest of the speeches because they're going to be great. But we will be around at the after party. We're dead keen to talk to everybody. Make sure you're protected. It can be about spoofing. It can be about other fraud prevention or anything else you can think of. And if not, that means my speech was perfect and you totally agree, and I am very happy. So I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you very much for your time, and I hope to speak to you later. Thank you. <laughs>